in this session we are discussing k sachidanandan's poem gandhi and poetry it is one of the remarkable poems that appears in a collection of poems entitled while i write new and selected poems one of his recent anthologies the poem construct an imaginary dialogue between gandhi and poetry it is a very poignant poem profound thoughts and deep analysis of the relationship of gandhian philosophy with aesthetics it is a brilliant act of conversation between a poem poetry and mahatma gandhi the poem is we can say that it is the profound thoughts and the deep analysis of the relationship of gandhian philosophy with aesthetics and the discourse is not between the poem which is personified and gandhi but it is between sachidanandan and gandhi at sabarmati ashram Gandhism and poetry Gandhi at the hand loom wheel spinning yarn and hinting the poet to write the poetry of ground realities The poem construct an imaginary dialogue whereas a poem comes and stands in in front of gandhi at sabarmati ashram where first it is unnoticed by gandhi in the process of doing it the poet intervenes with his oblique comments on the appropriation of the indian poetic tradition by elitist predilections let me read the poem one day a lean poem reached gandhi's ashram to have a glimpses of the man gandhi spinning away his thread towards ram took no notice of the poem waiting at his door ashamed as he was no bhajan the poem cleared his throat and gandhi looked at him sideways through those glasses that had seen hell have you ever spun thread he asked ever pulled a scavenger's cart ever stood the smoke of an early morning kitchen have you ever starved the poem said i was born in the woods in a hunter's mouth a fisherman's brought me up in his hamlet yet i know no work i only sing first i sing in the courts then i was plump and handsome but i am on the streets now half starved that's better gandhi said with a sly smile but you must give up this habit of speaking in sanskrit at times go to the fields listen to the peasant's speech then the poem turned into a grain and lay waiting in the fields for the tiller to come and upturn the virgin soil moist with a new rain the poem can also be seen as an explanation to the questions as to why there has been a disconnect between the famed and much wanted indian poetic tradition and the common man's concerns in the poem in the first paragraph a poem which is personified stood in front of gandhi which is unnoticed by gandhi 
the point is that the writer wants to tell us that the poetry which is now which is unnoticed by gandhi is because it is not the poetry is not talking about the common man's issues the poetry is not voicing the unvoiced so in the beginning itself gandhi unnoticed it when the poetry tries to get the attention of gandhi he looked at him and asked, and asked so many questions gandhi asked the poem have you ever spun thread ever pulled the scavenger's cart ever stood the smoke of an early morning kitchen and have you ever starved these questions are asked by gandhi to the poetry talks about the common man's concerns he talks about the layman's everyday business why gandhi asked these questions to the poetry gandhi asked these questions to the poetry so that he intends to tell the poetry that you have to notice all these you are not noticing all these you are not noticing the common man you are not voicing the unvoiced you are neglecting the common man common man has to be given voice through the poetry then where is the poetry till now the poetry says i was born in the woods in a hunter's mouth a fisherman brought me up in his hamlet yet i know no work i only sing first i sang in the court then i was plump and handsome but i am on the streets now half starved see how beautifully the poet imagines that poetry what is its position now poetry flourished in the court it was plump and handsome it was taken care by the kings he says i know only to sing then the poetry says now i am on the streets now now the poet he doesn't know where to go what to write so he says i am half starved then gandhi says that's better with a sly smile but you must give up this habit of speaking in sanskrit at times what does it mean he says that poetry has to shift its concern from the upper class to the middle class lower middle class concerns it has to know the ground realities of the layman he asked the poetry go to the fields listen to the peasant speech gandhi asked the poetry to go to the fields listen to the peasant speech you have to go and listen to them you have to go and then you will come to know what their condition is then you should know how to voice them how to give voice to them
the poem is actually a translation that he himself translated from malayalam the translation appeared in 2001 so it is rather a recent and it's a short and simple poem the poem is a form of an imaginary conversation between gandhi and a poem as that i told you this is highly imaginative that's why a poem is able to walk around and strike up a conversation with gandhi sachidanandan imagines himself as a poetry go to gandhi and asks him what to write gandhi answers him go to the fields listen to the peasants why the disconnection between the famed and much wanted indian poetic tradition and common man's concern this is the question that is answered in the poem the indian poetic tradition has always been voicing the upper class and the lower class is being neglected the common man's concern was neglected the poetry's origins in common man's terrain that one should remember the appropriation of the indian poetic tradition by illicit predilections gandhi's statement suggests that the poetry has to give voice to the people who are suffering he has to give voice to the people to the layman to the peasants to the ground realities the focus of the poem gains importance as it highlights poetry's origin in the common man's terrain and its subsequent movement away from it at last when gandhi asked the poetry to go to the fields and listen to the peasants suddenly the poem turned into a grain and lay awaiting in the fields for the tiller to come and upturn the virgin soil moist with the new rain that means then the poet realizes that he has to give voice to the peasants to the common man to the ground realities so he went to the fields and he waited there for the tiller to come and upturn the grain the poetry turn into grain it means poetry realizes that where it has to go now so it turned into grain and went to the fields it was waiting for the tiller to come and upturn the virgin soil moist with the new rain it is waiting for the new dimension it is waiting for the new voice the poem has to remain unnoticed by gandhi for some time as the lat latter is engrossed in the karma of spinning his thread towards ram the emancipated poem due to his ivory tower attitude sustained 
affiliation to the elite strata of society and also the estrangement from nature feels ashamed of not being a bhajan a song form with the reach of the rank and file the series of questions of gandhi that ensue his squint glance affirm the need to imbibe the pangs of suffering and misery the inevitable experience or the realization of the experience required for poetic creation the expression like spinning thread pulling a scavenger's cart standing in a kitchen smoke and starved are all associated with the common people but unfamiliar to the poem then the poem pleads his helplessness as he was born in the woods in a hunter's mouth an illusion to the birth of the first verse in the mouth of ratnakara valmiki an excellent hunter later he was brought up by a fisherman but he was alienated from ordinary reality that is why he was able to make only encomiastic shlokas in the courts where he was showered with administration resulting in his becoming plump and handsome here the poet alludes to the time when elogies of psychopaths were fostered by the aristocracy the formative period of sanskrit by degrees dwindled to lose its vigor and vitality the poet is lamenting over the plight of poetry which is devoid of any poetic merit poems were written not on subjects like poverty exploitation misery nature sorrow common man's struggle for survival etc gandhi's ironic appreciation of the poems half starved state is suggestive of the need to have affliction or misfortune and suffering people for a real poem to ooze out gandhi urges the poem to give up the habit of speaking in sanskrit and then go to the fields in search of raw material for poetry he says go to the fields listen to the peasant speech gandhi's words echo wordsworth defense of poetry as given in lyrical ballads the poems in lyrical ballads were written chiefly with a view to ascertain how far the language of conversation in the middle and low classes of society is adapted to the purpose of poetic pleasure readers accustomed to the uh, godiness and uh, inane phraseology of many modern writers if they persist in reading this book to its conclusion will perhaps frequently have to struggle with feelings of strangeness and awkwardness in the poem the poem's existential angst is due to his concern for elite class and disregard for the common folk inspired by gandhi's words the poem experiences a trans substantiation and becomes a green which is awaiting the tiller to come and upturn the virgin soil moist with a new rain the farmer tills the virgin soil of new experiences with his sweaty perseverance mixed with the new rain of nature and thus feeds the grain to 
resurrect from hibernation and as a result the poem is reborn with greater recognition and acceptance Dylan Thomas ventilates the same notion in Poetry is what in a poem makes you laugh, cry, prickle, be silent, makes you toe nails, twinkle, makes you want to do this or that or nothing, makes you know that you are alone in the unknown world, that your bliss and suffering is forever shared and forever all your own. Thus, the poet analyzes the deprivation of economiastic slow songs and poems caused by the absence of saddest thoughts, sunburnt myth, the title, nameless, unnumbered acts of kindness and love. The poet rightly presents Gandhi to be encountered by the poem because he had seen hell, the sordid realities of life. The poet creates a proposia by creating a conversation between Gandhi and the personified figure poem. Gandhi's words make the poem condensed to remain rooted in the ground, assembles a life's reality, an excellent example of poetic creation as Gandhi advised the poem can be seen in Iago Perinth of R.S. Thomas where Iago becomes the poet's central poetic subject. The question mark made by the figure of the solidarity former image of the process of poetic creation in R.S. Thomas. One should listen to Thomas in his essay that he says words and the poet in my contact with others or out in the world of nature I see something, begin to turn it over in my mind and decide that it has poetic possibilities. Poetry thus begins when the world seizes a passing man and plants itself with him like a seed. <laughs> 